we're back. It's Secure Packet. Me and Brad here. How you all doing? Hey, guys. So uh, we had a recording that we did about a week ago. Unfortunately, it didn't record. So we're back at it, and we're just going to bring you some of the uh, – and another, another, you know, part two on the uh, recent Bigfoot news and happening. Um, have, a, have a few things to go over. Uh, we're going to kind of touch on the top five in the playlist that you guys can follow down below. Um, as Brad always mentions, it's, um, we, we go through our playlist and we just kind of comb through them with a, uh, fine tooth comb and, uh, bring you the latest of what we think is, uh, important and, uh, up to date and all that good stuff. So, uh, happy to be back guys. Uh, the first one we're going to go into is a ways down on the playlist, but we talked about it last week and I think it's important to bring it up again, Brad, yeah. uh, about the Sasquatch Central, um, about a drill uh, of Delta team members uh, from the uh, joint forces that were conducting a drill up in the Sierras. So basically what happened was is this joint forces uh, Delta team was conducting drills in the Sierra and uh, the high Sierras in California here in January of this year. So it's a pretty recent happening and report. Um, the story is that, while conducting these drills, a team of uh, Delta Force members, their uh, spec, spec ops, uh, were aggressively uh, pursued and attacked by uh, Sasquatch or a uh, entity and uh, Bigfoot, whatever you might want to call it. Um, it it kind of came down to the fact of uh, this this team that was conducting the drill uh, lost contact with with Tom and another two Delta Force teams were sent in to uh, rescue and recover this missing team that uh, reported to have been stalked and attacked by uh, Bigfoot. Um, so basically, I don't know if you remember, Brad, but this uh, they, they, these two teams get in there to uh, search for and uh, re rescue and recover this team, uh, but yep. these guys were nowhere to, nowhere to be found. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, very believable, you know. Um, you know, it just – the way it's described and the way that they um, kind of got separated and then they regrouped and then, you know, brought all that firepower down on the Squatch, you know, basically took it out. Um, yeah. It, it was a battle, right? I mean, like, if you're – It was. Yeah, if you're, you know, if you've even just watched a war movie, it'd give you some type of understanding, you know, a realistic war movie-ish, um, what they kind of went through, because, yep. you know, um, they were separated, the Bigfoot tried to outflank them, but they, you know, caught on to it and luckily they had enough firepower to basically bring it down but it was not easy it was not like a you know a little 10 minute firefight it was a prolonged engagement which is you know that's that's always hard because when you don't know when you haven't beaten the enemy in a kind of quick order <laughs> yeah yeah and it, it's interesting because i mean you know having uh, us having the military background right um, these, these guys are are cream of the crop, and they see they see everything and then some. And they're they're uh, well, you know, fine tuned machines when it comes to close quarter combat. And the fact that these guys were reportedly a, a few of the the team members, I believe two, uh, were taken out by the Squatch from from as the story goes, as the report goes. Yeah. Um, so for these guys to be uh, challenged and 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 outmatched almost by by this one Bigfoot is pretty. I, th I think that's why we wanted to bring it up because um, a more of an aggressive report for sure. So, and I, I know the the report talks about the Sasquatch possibly being sick or injured, and that that was maybe the cause for um, for the for the attack. I'm not not quite sure, but I mean these guys basically. Gave, like you said, gave it everything they they had. It brought brought the squats down with a, a saw, and um, 
which uh, I, I can't remember what caliber the saws are. Um, do you remember, Brad? Um, I want to say 5.56, but I'm not positive. Yeah, I was going to say 5.56. But it, any, anyway, a large, uh, uh, you know, a very large uh, caliber of a, of, a, of a round, and and they took the thing down eventually. But it was, like you said, it was a prolonged uh, overnight uh confrontation and uh something that we really stood out to us and we wanted to talk about first and uh yeah so i mean that, i know we've talked about this in the past that you know sasquatch and bigfoot uh they obviously uh from what research shows moving groups and this one could have been more possibly of an aggressive nature and i know we've talked about like local uh, groups and behaviors and patterns and uh, this one really just stands out to us so yeah uh, I think what's we, happening we is that you know they'll spend, send these teams in and we just as a general public happened to get a lucky enough to get a glimpse of it I think it was through uh, I can't remember exactly where the report came through I think it was was a Sasquatch Central maybe um, yep yeah, and, you know, I think there are probably, you know, I, I would venture to say these teams, you know, they probably go around the country and do this on a regular basis, you know. Um, I, I, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure, but um, my gut kind of tells me, yeah, I think they go in. I heard about it. It was a situation, a, you know, a few years ago. I think it was uh, yeah, East Coast somewhere where – you know, a squatch was pinned in a barn somewhere, and they cordoned off the whole block. Basically, everybody had to evacuate the block, essentially. No in, no out type thing. And uh, they went in, and I think they probably did the same thing there, but this thing wasn't as aggressive. Um, right, right. Yeah, because, you know, I think, and it's, you know, I don't know for sure either if they're trying to hide it. Probably are because they don't want it to come out because the national forest would be. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Um, well, and it's mm -hmm. interesting you mentioned that because the kind of as this report ends, the this uh, this soldier that's giving the report basically says that they were before they were uh, brought out of the area and debriefed that a uh, some uh, some sort of a, of a medical team came out to recover the. Uh, the, the dead squatch and took it away. Right. And I, I think I think you're right. I think that we've seen a lot of stories. I mean that that one in uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains, for example, where that little boy was taken. Where back in I think the 70s, wasn't it? Or 80s? Right. Um, right. Where they they brought in the uh, Green Berets and they did their own thing. They had their own comms and they said, you know, get out of our way. They came in, did their business, and they left. So yeah. I I, I think it's. I think you're right. I think it's been going on for a long time. Yeah, and you know this, th these, you know this one they ran across probably, you know, up in that area. Who knows? You know, it just maybe this clan of them or whatever you want to call them. You know, the family of them, they just happen to be bigger. You know, up there, and you know maybe it's because they're in the mountain region. Um, you right. know, there's been other sightings by, you know, I think there's a Marine Corps training area. And I remember a BFRO report of, you know, some of those guys seeing one up. And I think they utilized that same area. You know, the, they didn't call it joint back then, but they would all kind of share training grounds, you know, the high mountain, high elevation mountain training. Yeah, um, yep. So, you know, maybe it was along those same lines. This, I don't think that was aggressive one in that other report. Um, not, not from what I remember. Yeah, who knows? But maybe you know, these things could be a lot more highly intelligent than we realize too. That's the other side of this too, right? I mean, I they, agree. Like maybe it was a, a bad apple, just like we, you know, people can be good or bad. Well, know? yeah, that too. But what I'm more concerned with, and I think I'm almost positive the military's thinking this too, is, um. You know, if they're trying to learn our tactics, <laughs> that's an issue, right? So it's um, a big problem. <laughs> yeah, and we won't allow that, essentially. No. You know, so yeah. um, it could get a bit ugly. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're if you're giving Beck off the run for their money, then yeah, there's an issue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, that we want, wanted to talk about that one, but um, do you want to go over uh, the uh, photo comparison uh, clip that we have in the top five? Um, yeah, we can. Um, let's see. That one is basically from. It's a. So, or, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, YouTube channel. I think it's called Did You Know? Let me click on this real quick. Um, yeah, which I'm not super familiar with it. They do have a lot of subscribers. Um, and yeah, I they. That, I haven't seen them before either, but that was, that was a pretty good clip. Yeah, and they. I'm running it now. They actually. Some of these pictures were had uh, already been seen, basically. Um, right. You know, we had seen many of them, but there was a few in here, especially there's one that it's going to play here in a minute of a uh, um, Sasquatch that's out in the, you know, high altitude, I'm assuming, maybe. I don't. It looked like it was a mountainous area um, that essentially was all white which pretty incre pretty incredible yeah it looked like it was it was pretty believable because if you look at the you know it didn't look like a suit it looked like um you know a squatch that just had you know is, i don't know if they're older or what do you know it when they're white like that i'm assuming maybe they're older and it's gray hair i don't know <laughs> you know oh well, i would I mean, who knows um as far as i've as research goes when i've the, uh, when I've come across the reports of that and uh, research based on uh, what well, you also get like the red haired ones too so I don't know if it's so much of a, an age thing but I, I would from what I've been reading I would I, I would venture to say it's more of a regional type of deal mm -hmm. um, where it's an adaptation to the environment uh, yeah. to me that that would seem more logical and uh, believable when you're looking at it from that you know, truth and scientific aspect. I, I think, I think definitely uh, environment plays a huge part in coloring. And um, but yeah, that's an incredible photo. And did you see the one too of the the squatch? Uh, it was brown and dark in color, but running through the snow in the trees. Yes, yes. That one, that one, like I was saying, just sent chills down my spine. And I know we're not about feeling necessarily, but you know, when you come across a, a clip or a photo, when when it's when there's no doubt in your mind that it's legit and it just uh, brings it right back home. So yeah, that's definitely two very interesting photos to look at and, and think about. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, the one going through the snow just tells you how powerful these things are. I mean, because, you know, it, last time I went through snow, there was any deepness. Uh, I mean, it's a struggle, you know, Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a mess. You're just trying trying to get through it. Yeah, so to see these things just take down, well, you know, brush for one thing, but snow like that, uh, you know, not unless you're maybe, I don't know, a, an athlete, you know, that is able to do hurdles or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be the average Joe be able to just go no. out there and do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right, and put on a suit and go do that. So it's like, like I... To me, like you said, it's those two shots are far more believable just for that fact alone. Um, so yeah, definitely worth worth a look, guys. So let, let us know what you think down below. Yep. Um, let's see, John. The other one is. Um, let me look here. I think we wanted to talk about the uh, one with Bigfoot Tony and the yeah. different. Yeah. pictures yeah you want to get in on that one yeah this kind of goes back to the scott carpenter videos i mean it's obviously from bigfoot to tony but um it, I, correct me if i'm wrong but this clip basically uh is a comparison of photos of the same spot uh one either a cell phone or a gopro and then the other like a professional xlr camera and just the difference in the two um um but they, they, or, I think or, they or, were just diff, different pictures, not necessarily comparison of the same pictures, I, I don't think. Okay. 
true. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, this definitely goes back to that Scott, Scott Carpenter style of uh, photos and, and video clips. Um, basically, where you wouldn't know that a squatch was right on top of you uh, and right in the bush next to you. But these photos, uh, kind of almost like Scott Carpenter's videos, remind you of like a predator type of feel, like where you wouldn't even know that the squatch was right there. But very, very detailed, uh, really uh, interesting to look at each and every clip because it, it, there's, it's just so the detail and the camouflage and the everything that, you know, possible, you know, I don't want to say cloaking, but I did, you know, that, that whether they're capable of that or not, or how that all works. And, um, just an interesting, interesting video clip to say the least. Yes. And you're right. You're right. It is the same shot taken back over with a Canon or uh, another camera, you know, versus, a um, a phone or something, you know, so that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then it, it almost to me, I don't know if, if you agree, but these, the ones with the GoPro or the cell phone pictures, to me, it's easier to make out what, what they're looking at when they zoom in and, and, and look at the detail of it. Um, but, but the XLR, it's interesting to look at those shots too, or like the professional cameras where it's so detailed and so, so, you know, the, the quality is so good that it makes it almost hard to pick them out. You know, like you can't, you can't really, it, it, it's whatever they do to hide themselves and, and disguise themselves. Obviously they do very well because it's, it's hard to pick it out. Right. Right. Yeah. It's um, pretty intense. I mean, he makes a good point, you know, to do this to comparison. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else do this, and it's that's just great, you know. Um, it's I agree. You know, photography. I don't proclaim to be an expert, but um, you know, one of our team members, Nicole, uh, is really getting into it now, and you know, there's a lot you can do, kind of after the fact, you know, during the fact. Uh, cameras, lighting, everything comes into play, so. All points are valid. It's a great, um, you know, YouTube video he did. Um, I'd like to see more of it for sure. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just uh, there's so much going on, like we always say, guys, that, you know, take a look at, at the playlist. That's why we, we do it. We try and bring you things that we think are important and relevant, not just any old random clip. I mean, there's a lot in there, but – it's well worth going over and uh, letting us know what you guys think, because that's like we've always said, that's what we're all about. It's the community and finding and seeking truth. So, right. And um, then John, the last one is that I think, um, Cascade Bigfoot's a solid guy. He's out there. He's, I mean, if there's anyone I think is going to end up getting some good footage, it's probably going to be him. Cause he's out there so much. And, really really putting it out there to try he you know i'm hoping he does i'll just put it that way you know just do yeah. the amount of effort he's put into it he's not he's not an armchair quarterback he's in the game right so oh he's yeah he's one of uh, one of our favorites that's that's for sure so um why don't you why don't you talk about this one because i i only saw a bit of it so i'll, I'll leave that one to you Right, sure, no problem. Yeah, I mean, like we say, it's Cascade Bigfoot, and he, uh, his, you know, the title of his was a, you know, Bigfoot attack, uh, which really he didn't get attacked, but he did get blocked, uh, which can feel like an attack, you know, when you're out in the woods. Um, by, by yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I think he did have I'm someone with the group. Yeah, he had, I think, I believe one other person with him. He tries to, um go with somebody i believe at least it looked like it in the video he had someone with them um just like just like we always say guys go in twosies or more yeah and he i think he's pretty much well aware of that um and he's always yeah. armed too um the, and it, it, he goes through the video it's pretty interesting how he um does a you know now dogman i don't know if you know 100 percent convinced of that but um he kind of goes into that in the video that there's a Bigfoot and a Dogman, 
essentially near each other, almost as if the dog man uh, was like a somebody's obedient animal, pet, dog. Um, right. And Bigfoot was walking away. Dog man, dog man um, was kind of guarding his position as he did, waiting for um, basically commands from the Bigfoot, which is really interesting from that perspective. It Believe it or not, I mean, it's kind of the way he broke it down, went through the pictures. It's pretty long video you know he breaks down the frames he's got some pretty good gear that really help with the matters and it's a very heavily forested area where he squatches at um, yep so it's definitely believable from a stand at least from a bigfoot standpoint and kind of the fact that he got blocked it gets to our first story right of kind of how their tactics and things like that you know these are kind of starting to present themselves as we go through these stories and make these they are. connections. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, like you, like you said, I'm not quite sure how I feel about dog man, but, um, or, or you know, it, I, I haven't done enough research to, to back up any kind of a statement on, on that, but right. you're right. It's really interesting. I know that we, we have done research and a study on the, the way Sasquatch might use other animals as a way of, uh, I don't know, like like you said, either pets or like security, as it as it were, uh, crows, and I know have presented themselves to us in many different ways. Like maybe they keep them, uh, they keep crows or birds as pets, um, and that the crow uh, uh, reportedly alarms the Bigfoot to. Uh, any intruder present. Um, right. You know, and I know in, in past videos and uh, expeditions that you've done, I know there was a few times where we've picked out, oh, hey, listen to that crow. And that and right around that, you know, the video you have, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you still have it, but the one uh, where you had the acorn uh, thrown at you. Right. Um, I, I, I know, I'm sure you remember that there was a uh, a crow uh, in, in and around that area and kind of, seemingly following you throughout your your little excursion there so right um right i think there's something to what cascade bigfoot is talking about as far as pets or uh alerting the bigfoot um dog men or not right no that's a good point i mean we don't really know until the study of these things get further down the road i mean it's just, to me, it's all in its infancy, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah. really, the you know, it, it's not a great comparison, but the internet's really still kind of in its infancy. This is, subject's been around longer, and it's still, we just, there, we don't know, probably even, I don't know, not even a, a third, a quarter of everything right. we need to, you know. Scratch, you know. Scratching the surface, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's why it's good, you know, like channels like ours, we try and, the playlists are great, I think, and we'll try and, Definitely never repeat a video, guys. We try and maintain these things. That's we kind of. I think that's one great thing about Secure Packet, John, is um, you know we're going to add these these videos into the playlist and maintain them. Now they may not always be the most current. It, it, we're trying to put you know only recent videos, but I think sometimes YouTubers yeah. will kind of rehash content, and we can't really you know the published date we can't control that but if we recognize it as dated we'll definitely um, not utilize it but yeah I think that's a good point John I think uh, Cascade's doing a great job we thank everybody that uh, has you know kind of contributed to this playlist and uh, you know allowing yeah. us to, to speak to their you know the awesome job they're doing Bigfoot Tony and all of them you know um, you know please keep up the good work we appreciate all you guys all the subscribers um, you know, and we're going to continue to try and, you know, get to a point where we at a minimum have a daily, daily video just to keep it all going and just so much news coming out on the Bigfoot world. And John, do you want to get into the UFO stuff coming up next time? It's really moving I along sure, too. I sure as heck do. I mean, there's, there's so much like strangeness happening in our, uh, not only in big with Bigfoot news, but I mean in the UFO and uh, strange anomalies slash happenings on our planet. There's just 
so much exciting stuff to go over, and we're we're happy to bring that to you guys next time. We're really I, I'm excited. Yeah, there's definitely um, some strangeness going on out in Hawaii. Um, there's been oh, yeah. a lot of rumbling uh, ground shakes out here in Cali that I don't think are all contributed to earthquake movements. Don't know. Uh, we got some big military operate uh, areas in this AO that we live in. Um, yep. But you know, there's there's a lot happening. So we're going to circle back to that pretty quickly. That probably you know next week. Um, but again, guys, please like, subscribe, subscribe, comment below. Um, John, do you want to? You have anything else to kind of lead um, out? Yeah. Yeah, we'll kind of just lead you guys out. Um, like Brad was saying, uh, lots of stuff going on uh shaking and baking and quaking um not uh, let alone what's going on in the skies we have a lot of interesting clips that we're going over right now that we want to bring to your guys' attention um i think you're absolutely right that the quakes and the the shaking here in california is definitely a reflection of of what's happening in hawaii um and plate tectonics there's a uh, just kind of as a tease or something i want to talk about uh, a gentleman on YouTube by the name of, uh, I think his handle is Dutch Scent, talks about plate tectonic theory and early warning for earthquakes. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll touch on that. Um, and, and then plenty of clips that are just mind-boggling to go over in the UFO world as well. Um, some strange stuff that people have been reporting, uh, mostly in the Midwest, the flashes and interesting uh, just interesting shakes and booms in, in the ground and in the sky that we want to kind of talk about, too. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, right. Brad, you know, we've been talking about stuff recently, and there's plenty to go over. So Definitely, uh, definitely. So, yeah, guys, we uh, thanks, thanks for dropping by. Like, like Brad said, we, we really uh, are very appreciative of our subscribers and the uh, community out there. And, uh you guys all stay safe, and we will catch you next time. Catch you next time, guys. Look for a live event with John and I, and uh, we'll we'll cue you in when that happens. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good content for you uh, then, too. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Take care, guys.